basic variable cam timing systems advance the whole cam, which means that the effective valves open sooner at high revs and close sooner. Not necessarily desirable. It's good to have them open sooner, but they close sooner as well. So there's some things that cannot be completely done by just varying timing. There are ways to fine-tune the opening of the valves. This is an example at the bottom of a Honda VTEC. Honda's VTEC system can switch between two different cam profiles. Different timing, different lift, different duration. As you can see, the high lift cam starts much earlier, lifts much higher. This winds up with about a 20 horsepower increase when we switch the high lift cam. Their system is very straightforward. It switches between running on the two low lift cams and at the high RPM switch to the high lift cam. Variable valve lift has some things that's go for us. Fixed valve lift is a compromise between high end power and low end operation. You can't have both and you can't overcome it all with valve timing. Now the valves control the flow of the air and the fuel into the cylinders and out of the exhaust. When and how long the valves open in duration measured in crankshaft degrees and how much the valves move, lift, both affect engine efficiency. A typical valve lift may be in the range of 10 millimeters for an average vehicle. However, we can optimize it from there depending on other vehicles. Economy is best with a valve lift of 2 to 5 millimeters at light loads, but it limits high-end performance. This explains why so frequently we find that economy cars, they just run out of steam. The best high-end power is achieved with a valve lift over 10 millimeters, but it has poor idle. We're all familiar with the poor idle of a full race cam, which has high valve lift, high valve duration. One design cannot do it all. Valve timing alone can't do it all. Now, let's talk about what's going to happen with fixed valve lift, just like we did with fixed valve timing. Owners want performance, but the government demands certain fuel economy standards, and emission standards be met. Performance takes a back seat when we have to have and meet government-mandated emissions and economy standards. Valve lift, on the other hand, with a variable valve lift, we can get a 6 to 10% fuel economy improvement with better performance at the same time, which is a very good combination. Variable valve lift is more difficult and more expensive than simple cam phasing or cam timing, as you want to call it. But let's talk about valve van timing. The time available for one intake cycle is approximately 34 milliseconds at 700 RPM. At 2100 RPM, the available time is down to 11.4 milliseconds. At 7000 RPM, the available time is down to 3.4 milliseconds. We need to start opening much sooner at 7000 than we do at 2100. That's why in the VTEC Honda, it has that high lift cam. It gives us more duration, more lift. The ideal valve action for 3.4 milliseconds will not be ideal during the combustion or power stroke and intake for other things. So we're going to have to design everything to work during the right part. The power produced will depend on the expansion of the burning gases. The amount of fuel mixture ignited is determined by engine size and volumetric efficiency, which is directly related to the overall valve operation. We've talked about valve lift. We've talked about valve timing. They're all coming together here at the same time. Cam design, where well, the engine designer must make all these compromises. If we want to have the ideal engine speed for max torque, then we have to design it one way, and it'll do poorly at low speeds and vice versa. Opening the exhaust valve early, piston moving down, while gases are still expanding and the cylinder pressure is slightly elevated, will start exhaust flow sooner for better breathing. This can cause higher emissions at the low end of the RPM range. So just like valve timing, we can't do valve lift universally. Again, we talked about compromises. Closing the exhaust valve later will increase high-end performance, which gives us increased valve overlap. If we get specific on one vehicle, Closing the valve at 22 degrees after top dead center instead of 15 degrees after top dead center will cool the engine. 
but will reduce performance at low engine revolutions. So what's good for high, bad for low. This offers an EGR effect if we have variable valve lift. During the intake stroke, exhaust valves are closed with the intakes open. If we have an 80 degree before dive center instead of 70 degrees before dive center, we'll improve low end torque. So if we open it earlier instead of later, we'll wind up with more low end torque. But there's no one number that works for every condition. There are advantages to having valve overlap and there's in different things. Valve overlap occurs when the exhaust valves remain open while the intake valve is, open, is also open. Overlap will cause incoming cooler mixture to cool down the small amount of heated exhaust gases remaining in the cylinder. This is going to produce an effect known as draw through. Now, we're going to shrink these heated gases and we're going to create a low pressure area which draws more mixture in. The draw through improves volumetric efficiency of the engine. Draw through increases in the mid range torque area, which is a primary area where customers look for torque, this 40 to 60 passing ratio. Uh, draw through at idle causes poor idle quality, is totally undesirable. So it's the same thing during the, during the compression stroke. Intake exhaust valves are closed. The amount of mixture that is compressed is determined by the volumetric efficiency, They're directly related to the valve train operation. Now we talked about the design of a Miller engine. We purposely allow volumetric efficiency to go down to improve efficiency and we sacrifice power. That's the type of thing we were talking about earlier. Now basic valve timings are compromised from good idling performance as we've said. Let's hit a few of these. Variable valve timing is one approach to reduce the impact of this compromise between performance, smooth idle, and good mid-range operation. Variable valve lift is another function that can be varied with engine RPM. Spark timing has a huge effect on emissions performance and economy, and it's an integral part of the software built into the computers. The VVC systems currently in use, we'll talk about those. Intake valve timing only. This is called valve timing, valve phasing. Exhaust valve only, valve timing, valve phasing. Each one has its advantages. Intake and exhaust valve timing and phasing, both. And then valve timing with valve lift control. Future is going to be electro-hydraulic valve lifters and actuators. Variable valve timing of phasing is the starting point. We're going to get into the specifics of exactly how we do that. We've covered this generically and all the things can be happening. But we're going to be going into the various input signals. Cramp and cam signals are always important. They have additional importance in VVC. We're calling it VVC because we've gone beyond timing. We've gone beyond lift. We put the two together. And this is going to give us some important things in the future. The VVC relies on knowing where the crank and cam is, the engine speed data, and the positioning. We also need to know factors such as MAP, mass airflow, TPS, just like we do with injector pulse width. The correct any codes that relate to engine control as part of your diagnostic 